Man, it is hard to believe it has already been one week since PowerCon. It was an amazing experience. I could go on and on about all of the awesome things that happened over the course of that weekend, but this is a haul video. So you guys are here to see all the cool things I brought home from the show. Buckle up, because this is gonna be a long one. It's time to look at my stuff. All right, so of course, since PowerCon is the He-Man and She-Ra fan convention, this is one of the shows I have most been looking forward to spending a little bit of money to bring home some new things for my collection because I mean, this show is basically all the things I love right there in one place. And I picked up a lot of things that I wanna show you today. But of course, uh, there's always a lot of amazing fans who enjoy my work, who come to say hi to me at the shows, and they always gift me a lot of cool things. So I wanna start by giving as many shout outs as I possibly can uh, for all the cool little trinkets that I picked up there from the show. Now, as always, I am not the best at remembering everybody's names. So if your name is not on this stuff and I can't remember, I am very, very sorry. Uh, please don't hesitate to point it out in the comments if you're the person that gave me the things and I want to make sure you guys get proper credit. So here we go. Okay, let's start with all the shout outs because these are all cool people that came up to say hi to me, give me some fun little trinkets. So here we go. Kai Nugget Customs. Toy Shiz. By the way, I saw your recap video, it was very cool. Two very awesome pins from Chogrin. Uh, Chogrin is an amazing artist, by the way. This Orko that's hanging up back here on my wall, that's from him too. So shout out to Chogrin for the awesome pins that he gave me. Speaking of pins, the awesome Tom Bryski gave me these. Uh, hopefully you guys can see them really good there. They're, they're He-Man and Skeletor popsicles. They're actually very cool. Here, let me get them out of the... Uh, let me get them out of the package there so you can check that out. Cool little pin of Skeletor and He-Man. Get them out of the bag. There you go, as popsicles. I thought those were really fun designs. So thank you, Tom. These will go up on my uh, pin board here in the office. Han Cholo, these guys are always amazing. They make awesome uh, nerd themed jewelry. Uh, I'm always wearing their uh, Triclops ring and the Skeletor ring and the Battle Cat ring. I love their stuff, but they got some cool enamel pins. Picked up Castle Grayskull. Retro Rags Limited, my good friend Motu Joe. He was there with a booth selling amazing t-shirts and pins and lots of cool stuff. He actually did the official PowerCon pin, uh, so I picked that up from him, so shout out to Joe. Four Horsemen Toy Design, love those guys. And of course, a special shout out to George as well, because I know he helped with this awesome Mythic Legions enamel pin. Uh, by the way, George is the same guy who makes the Pixel Dan pins for me, so it's pretty cool stuff right there. Mo2 Nation. Love the pin. Thanks, guys. I love this Gray Skull sticker. I can't remember who gave it to me. I'm very sorry. Please feel free to let everybody know because this is an awesome design. Lole Punks! I feel bad because I was supposed to shoot something with him and things got so busy, but always a great time to see Lole. So I want to give him a shout out. Go check out his channel. In fact, uh, all of the guys from uh, Mexico specifically, all those guys that were there. Uh, gotta give a shout out to Los Eternia Pimps, which by the way, I think I got inducted because I got this really sweet t-shirt. <laughs> Look at this thing, it's amazing. You guys are awesome. It's always so great to see you and have an opportunity to hang out with you, even though it's not as much time as I would like it to be. Uh, you guys are fantastic, so thank you very much. Keep doing what you're doing. You guys are all incredible. Matt Kaiser, I had a good chance to talk to him at the show. Very good dude. Uh, he wrote a trilogy of books. It's like fan books for Masters of the Universe. Uh, it's called the Bloodline Trilogy. So go check those out. I believe they are free to download online if you want to read them. Okay, artist Rob Ayote. I hope I'm saying your name right. Ayote, Ayote uh, gave me some amazing stuff here. So I, he got some, he brought some prints to the show and he passed them to me. So we got the turtles in April here in the sewer based on the original cartoon series, and then he's got these amazing posters which are licensed by Mad Duck posters. Uh, if you've seen in the past, I've actually reviewed some of Mad Duck posters, awesome Masters of the Universe posters that they create. And so Rob's one of the artists that is doing posters for them. So this one right here is this amazing kind of um, uh, like Powers of Grayskull style poster here. Cause you've got Titus and Megator and Hero uh, fighting off the snake men there. King Grayskull's on there as well. 
very, very cool poster. And then there's also this amazing poster of the royal family. You got uh, Randor and Marlena, Adora and Adam and Cringer, all just having a good time. It's happy times in Eternos Palace, uh, but very cool. Thank you, Rob. These are very awesome. It was very nice of you to give these to me. Shout out to Amber. I always see her at PowerCon. She's a very lovely person. And this year she brought me this old He-Man and the Masters of the Universe uh, birthday party balloon. She says it's been hanging on her wall for a long time and she thought it would be something that I would enjoy. And she's right, because <laughs> I love this sort of stuff. And I actually have a whole collection of the Masters of the Universe birthday party stuff. I've got the hats, I've got the plates, I've got the tablecloth, all still in the package. I did not have a balloon. Um, so this is really cool. And, I, and since I'm a huge Masters fan, I love to collect the weird stuff like this. So I will definitely find a place to hang this up. So thank you so much. I love it. And then there's the kids. The kids are always the best. I'm always so blown away that kids love watching my content uh, and, and you know that they want to come and meet me and everything. So I had another amazing experience with a young fan named Diego who delivered this to me. It's a picture he drew of me holding up Mosquito, shouting out, I have the power. And it's amazing. Made my weekend. I love stuff like this. So Diego, thank you so much, buddy. I love this. I will definitely keep this as part of my collection. All right, so let's go ahead and start getting into things that I picked up. I think I have uh, one or two other things that were gifted to me, but they're more in the toys category. Um, so that's where we're at now. We're gonna start talking about the toy stuff, um, or at least the things that are more related to toys. So here's one of the things that I bought um, that I thought was a very, very good, good deal. Um, this is one of the vintage posters from the original Masters of the Universe toy line. And look at this, it's in great shape. And I, kinda, I think I'm gonna get this framed. I just need to find somewhere to hang it up in my home. But look, it's one of those amazing action figure checklists in poster form showing all these vintage Masters of the Universe figures. And then the backside shows vehicles and play sets. I love it. I love stuff like this. I love the old paper that would come packaged with the toys and stuff in the original line. And this one's in great shape and I did not have one. So very cool pickup. Here's a fun one. It is the Happy Meal box from the 2003 Masters of the Universe series when they were in the Happy Meals. Uh, I have the entire line still from back when I bought them at McDonald's. Um, and I thought it'd be really cool to have the box to kind of display with those. So that's very cool and good shape. You can look, there's like perforation so you can like open the drawbridge to Castle Grey School. That's pretty cool. I won't be doing that. Uh, the fun part, the other side is Bratz. <laughs> so Bratz, so it was split between He-Man and Bratz as the, uh, the uh, two toys inside the Happy Meal area at the time, but check that out. There's a fun little snake mountain maze. And anyway, I just thought that'd be really fun to display with the uh, Happy Meal toys that I have. So there's always amazing prints uh, from the filmation, like animation cells and prints and stuff like that. I don't typically go for animation cells. They're really fun to look at. Uh, but my booth was, my table was directly across from a table this year that had a whole bunch of filmation cells. Um, and I decided at one point I wanted to flip over there and look through it because I saw some cool stuff coming out of that booth. And then I found one that I just decided I wanted to spring for because I don't know, it kind of hit an emotional memory for me. It's Orko and Cal dancing. This is from the end of the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. And I know that it's panned by a lot of fans. It's really campy and weird, but man, I love the He-Man and She-Ra Christmas special. And it's just got one of those great kind of emotional ties to it, you know, because it reminds me of watching it as a kid. I love Relay the puppy. I love Skeletor having his moment, even though Skeletor, I like Skeletor the bad guy, but I like his moment of kind of good. Um, this, I just thought was a really pretty animation cell. So I decided to pick it up. Got the certificate of authenticity on the back there. So just a very cool piece to add to my collection. I'll frame this one and probably hang it up here in the studio somewhere. Oh, comic books. I bought a bunch of comic books at PowerCon. Um, actually, some of these were gifts. So I do want to give a special shout out uh, to Patrick because Patrick knows that I've been looking for a lot of the old Masters of the Universe comics, as well as comic books that are tied to toy lines. So he brought me the Star Comics Masters of the Universe number one, and he gave it to me, which is amazing because I did not have this. And then he also gave me a collection of DC mask comic books. Look at that. We've got, uh, well, we got number two, three, four, and six of the mass comic books. So Patrick, thank you so much, buddy. These are very cool. Oh, I love that one. Look at that cover. These are amazing. 
And then on the comic book front, I also want to give a shout out to Evan. He's a fan that's there uh, all the time at PowerCon. He came over to my table at one point specifically to tell me that he found a booth that had a whole bunch of the comic books that I'm typically looking for and I should go over there and check it out. So check it out I did and I got a great deal on a bunch of stuff. So here we go. I got Sectars number six and number seven. And then I got Crystar number two, number three, Number four, number five, number six, with Nightcrawler on the cover, number seven, and number nine. How amazing is that? Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, I, got, I think I missed some of the Sectars comics. I have Sectars one and two here also. Sectars one and two. So uh, that put a big, uh, that really plugged a big hole that was in my collection there. Uh, picked up a whole bunch of Sectars comics. In fact, I think I, I'm looking over at my comics rack. I totally have Sectars number one. <laughs> so now I have two of this one, but that's okay. Most of these I did not have. I got an amazing deal on all of these. Um, so shout out to Evan for telling me that that booth was over there and I dug through that bin and picked out a whole bunch of the comics uh, that I needed to add to my collection of comics that are from Toy Properties. And I gotta give a shout out to the dealer that was selling those comics because he turned out to be a fan of my videos. And one of the things I was looking at at his booth is this old um, New Adventures Battlebird vehicle. It's very, very busted. Um, these are known to be very brittle. There's supposed to be a bird head on the front and the bird head's missing. Um, he just gave it to me. He was like, I want you to have that because it's broken, but I know you're a fan. So uh, it is missing a whole bunch of stuff. But uh, the fact that he gave it to me was very nice of him. This is actually a very cool vehicle if you can find it complete. The problem is, is the plastic is so brittle, it's broken like this all the time. This thing shatters very easy. But shout out to the awesome dealer who gave that to me. All right, some more awesome random things that I picked up. How about some old Masters of the Universe cassette tapes? These are the Tape Me Along tapes. I'm almost positive I had these as a kid. These are, of course, stories on tape. So I've got volume two, Masters of the Universe here. Um, it doesn't have names of the stories. It just says Masters of the Universe volume two. I love the artwork on there. And then I've also got volume one, which contains the stories He-Man and Battle Cat and the Revenge of Skeletor. Uh, so these are awesome. And I need to find myself a tape deck now. I think I've got a tape player somewhere because I want to listen to these stories. And this is a unique piece. I love finding the unique stuff. I think this is uh, Italian. This is an old uh, school book. And what I mean by that, let me open this up because I want to show you. First of all, the artwork on the front of this, absolutely amazing with Prince Adam knocking Ninjor out of the tower. <laughs> That's, he doesn't need He-Man, Prince Adam's got this, uh, but it's a notebook. See, it's just got empty notebook pages inside. So it's an old school book. But the thing that's really cool about it is the back of it has a comic strip, which we're only seeing on these notebooks. So this alone I felt was worth it for the artwork on the front and the sweet comic on the back. And it's in beautiful shape. He actually had a couple of them and it was a really funny moment because I decided I bought one. He had like two or three different styles and I bought one and after I bought it, uh, people kept seeing it and asking me where I bought it and then running over to him and buying the rest of them. So that dude sold out of these like super fast, I think, because <laughs> everybody bought them once I picked it up. Uh, so I was very lucky that I got the one that I did once everybody discovered that they were there. All right, this was a gift as well that was gifted to me uh, from an awesome fan who stopped me in the hallway at PowerCon. Uh, he totally picked this up for Mad Hunter. So shout out to my buddy Rodri Rodrigo, the Mad Hunter. Uh, also because it's totally in a case. Look, Mad Hunter's got his own branded cases for figures. He's a rock star, I'm telling you. I've, I, I've been around for 10 years. I need to get on the ball. I don't have like branded toy stuff. <laughs> Anyway, this is not about Mad Hunter. This is about the awesome fan that bought this for me. Uh, please post in the comments if you see this and tell me uh, because I'm really sorry, but I can't remember your name and I want to give you a proper credit because this is amazing. It's like a bootleg or a resin cast version of Panthro from the Vintage Thundercats line. Uh, the action feature is intact. Kind of. <laughs> it's got the lever on the back that moves the arms. That's pretty amazing to me. Uh, but this thing is awesome. And I love stuff like this. I love translucent toys. So thank you so much for grabbing this and gifting it to me. It's so very cool. Weird He-Man vehicles. Do you guys remember this? 
This is from the 2000X series. It is the Spit Bowl. It's one that I never owned before. I uh, decided to buy it at the show when I saw it. It is loose, but it's complete. All the parts are there. It's so, so weird. It's got a missile on the top and you can see it's like a weird gummy kind of sticky, like it's supposed to be like mucusy, like he's spitting it because he's got one in his mouth too. And it's the same. It's like this weird gummy type thing. So you turn the tail and it can move the mouth. And when you push the tail upwards, he opens his mouth and fires the gooey missile. It's a weird vehicle. Look, there's a spot on the top for the heroes to sit. I had to have it, so strange. All right, let's get these out of the way. These were the PowerCon exclusive, so of course I picked these up. Uh, yes, I will be doing full reviews of all of these very soon, uh, within the next several days. You should be seeing full reviews of these. Uh, so I got series three of the uh, Masters of the Universe slime can muscle figures. There's no actual slime in there, it's just the muscle figures in the slime color. Uh, PowerCon has had a wave of these for the last three years, so this was the third wave uh, from Super 7, of course. And then we've got Driel and Uncle Montork, which look very cool in this package here. We've got Chopper, which is what Jitsu was called in the Filmation series. He had very few appearances, but, so it's got the Filmation image of him on the back. We got the figure of him based on his appearance in that series. And lastly, one of my all-time favorite characters, the Filmation version of Spike Or. A little bit different than like your toy version of the character. There he is right there, pretty cool stuff. So stay tuned, reviews are coming. Speaking of things I'm definitely gonna be reviewing pretty soon, uh, the Four Horsemen also had PowerCon exclusive versions of their Mythic Legions figures. Uh, at PowerCon every year, they always do repaints of some of their Mythic Legions to look like Masters of the Universe characters. So this year, uh, we've got, let me see if the name of the character, what's the actual name of this character? Is she on there? Um, Malina? Malina? <laughs> Evil Lynn, basically. It's their repaint that looks like Evil Lynn. And then we've also got uh, this amazing guy here. What is his name? Kawaros? I don't know if I'm saying that right. Kawaros? Kawaros. Anyway, he's like a battle cat in like human form. He's amazing. Both of these look incredible. They sold out super fast at the show, but the good news is that there's pre-orders for these also. So they'll definitely be, um, they'll be these will be available to the public. I hope, I don't know if the pre-orders already happened, but uh, the good thing about Four Horsemen stuff is they always offer opportunities to pick these up again. So you might be able to have these shipped still, but stay tuned because I'll definitely be opening these up and reviewing them as well. This was a really fun thing that was there. This is a company from Argentina called Rama, and they're making their own full production, brand new 5.5 scale line in the style of Vintage Masters of the Universe. One of the guys that works for this company is one of the old Top Toys guys. So you could see where this is going. Uh, if you've seen some of the other Top Toys stuff in the past, like Foyer's a T in the 2003 era, and then of course Top Toys produced all of the Vintage Masters of the Universe figures. So one of those guys is with this company, Rama, now and they're doing this new line called Cosmic Guardians or Guardians Guardianes Cosmicos. Look at these card backs. First of all, amazing artwork by the talented Axel Jimenez, who's done a lot of stuff for Masters of the Universe Classics. And check this out, we got these brand new characters here. Uh, so obviously this guy's got a very Zodak look to him. It's pretty obvious. But the rest of these guys, uh, a lot of these other guys, look like they have pretty unique looking sculpts. So you got that guy there, that's Adron. Uh, this one is Zarko. I guess he's our bad guy. Very Keldor looking, right? And then uh, we've got another white version of uh, this galactic soldier here, uh, kind of looking very uh, Zodak looking. These are very cool, and I'll definitely be doing a standalone video so we can get a closer look at those. But I thought that was pretty cool that they had a booth at PowerCon. A lot of people were picking these up. So pretty cool stuff from Argentina. And then there's Realm of the Underworld from the folks at Zola World. I've reviewed a lot of these figures before. These are basically brand new production figures that are based on a lot of the old Remco stuff. So more of that 5.5 scale stuff. He's done some amazing things. And so I bought some of these at the show because he brought them and I've been wanting to pick up some of his new designs. This is something else I'll be doing a full video on at some point, but I got Jewel Smuggler. The leg is popped off in the package, but they're all modular, so you can pop it back on once you open it. So uh, that's one of those things he says kind of happened on a few of these, but he's fixed with the factory, so shouldn't be happening on future runs of these figures. But man, this is so cool. I would just love the translucent blue skeleton. So we got Jewel Smuggler. We've got Headhunter. So amazing. So very amazing. We've got Shadow Claw, 
Which, by the way, he's totally got screech colors, right? That's a shout out to Ben Spencer. I know that was your idea. Uh, we've got Death, who looks a lot like the Speclatron Death lore figure. So he's gonna be very, very common, or very popular, I mean. And then we've got Grim the Executioner. So these are very cool figures, and I'll definitely be doing a full video to show these off a little closely very soon. All right, this bag right here has got a whole bunch of vintage figures that I picked up. So let me show you some of the fun things we've got going on in here. Let's talk bootlegs and knockoffs first. Uh, there's this amazing thing. It's incredible. This is some sort of weird little knockoff or bootleg. Uh, it's like a weird little He-Man looking guy with a very skinny body on this crazy little Eagle vehicle. When you press down the leg, it winds it up and then it actually makes it launch. Let's see if we can get, there you go. I just couldn't pass it up. I thought it was so weird and I had to buy it and add it to the collection. This one was gifted to me from one of the awesome vendors there when I bought something else from his booth, which I'll show you in just a bit. So I wanna give a shout out for that. And then I believe I bought this from him as well, uh, which is just an amazing knockoff. I've always been a fan of this one. Wanted to add him to my collection with that sweet red dragon head. Okay, so real deal vintage Masters of the Universe figures. I bought a bunch of them because one of the things I was specifically hoping to find at PowerCon this year were a lot of the variations of the vintage figures that I didn't already own. If you're not familiar, there's a lot of weird paint variations in the vintage line. And some of that has to do with original release versus later reissues. Um, so some of the earlier versions from like the original eight backs released in 82 have different paint deco than all the versions released after that. And thus they are a little harder to find. So I wanted to grab some of those, but any notable paint variations that I found that I know I didn't have in my collection, I decided to pick up. So let's run through some of those real quick. So this is Manny Faces, but it's the pink hoses variation. So you might notice, I don't know if it stands out very good on here, but the hoses on the front of his body are a much brighter pink than uh, the standard release that is more common. These are two mantennas that I picked up and the difference is where they were produced, what factory produced them because it did cause a color variation. So we've got uh, the version here from, which was produced in Mexico, but released in the US. Uh, this one has got a black lever on his back and he's got more of a orange paint mark above the bat emblem there on the front. The difference is the other figure here uh, which is, I, I don't remember which factory, because this one doesn't say, because the one with the black lever says Mexico on the back. The other one actually has a red lever. Now the lever's broken on this one, but I got this for cheap and he's a great display piece. So I still went ahead and picked him up. So the red lever is broken, but the other big difference is the paint deco on the front. You'll notice that it's painted red above the bat instead of orange above the bat. So just a weird little paint difference to look for. Um, and it's just because they were produced out of different factories. Triclops was released with three different face sculpts. It's so weird. It's just, the way you can tell is by looking at the nose and the mouth and how defined the grimace is on his face. So this is a version of Triclops that I did not have already where he's got like the really, really pronounced scowl and the flat big nose. Um, I didn't have this version of Triclops, so I picked this one up from the friend, my friends over at Bobacon Toys. Great store that's always there to, that always set up a power con. Uh, they're based out of Washington in the Seattle area. Um, but this is really cool. I didn't have this one in my collection. This Tila has got dark brown hair, dark brown boots, lighter red on all of the accessories, which I do have all of the accessories here. And she actually came with her card back as well. So she's actually the later version of Tila. So you can see it's got, it's not the eight back, it's like a later release, but these later releases had the darker brown hair, the brighter red weapons, and the paint deco on the face is a little different than the paint deco on the original eight back version. Uh, crazy enough, I believe this dark colored one, the brown haired one, as opposed to the red haired one, is the one that's a little tougher to find. I personally did not have this one in my collection. She was in beautiful minty shape with all of her accessories. So I was really happy to pick her up and add her to the collection. And then there's my favorite, one of the things that I was really looking for. This is the original 1982 eight back Skeletor. There are a few things that makes this one different than all of the other versions released. And he's actually a little bit more scarce as a result. One of the big differences that a lot of people know about are the boots are only half painted on the front. So you can see they're only painted on the front half, they are unpainted on the back. That's because originally Skeletor wasn't intended to be wearing boots, but actual shin guards. And you can tell because that's the way he was drawn in the mini comics. 
The other big difference is if you look at the face, the paint deco on the face is different, and he's got this little kind of orangish pink colors on his cheeks. The pink cheeks were only on this original eight bag version and not seen on any of the future releases. So this guy actually came packaged with his mini comic. Uh, I got this from the gentleman that I got those two knockoff figures from. So he threw that knockoff in for me for buying this. But this is one of the things I was hoping to find at the show. Was very happy to pick this up. Um, funny story, I was also gonna pick up the eight back man at arms that was there. He's got like the red dots on his helmet. Basically, he's got extra paint deck on his helmet, uh, but somebody got to it before me and bought it. <laughs> so I missed it, ah! So I'm still on the hunt for that version of man at arms, but I was very happy to pick up the original Skeletor to finally add to my collection. And my friends, that brings me to the final thing that I picked up from PowerCon. If you watched my haul video from unboxing in Mexico City, you might remember the big purchase there was a vintage Rotan in box, the top toys version. The packaging was completely different. It came in a fully enclosed box with uh, more artwork on it than we got in the US. Well, when I saw this at PowerCon, I decided I needed it to display with it. It's the US release of Rotan. So as you can see, it's in a window box. Uh, I believe this box is open because Rotan is backwards, so I'm gonna fix that. But the box is in great shape. This is another thing I picked up from Bobacon Toys. He was much cheaper than the Mexican version that I bought. But you can see the difference. It's got the same artwork, but there's less of it because it's just up here on the top flap. The rest of it is a window box that shows the vehicle inside. I, I, this is one of the cases where I prefer the Top Toys Mexican release over the US release, but now I've got both of them to display on the shelf side by side for one of my all time favorite Masters of the Universe vehicle. So there you go, my friends, all of the cool things I brought home from PowerCon. Thanks for sticking with me if you made it to the end of the video here. I know this was a long one. The show was amazing. I wanna give another special shout out because of this t-shirt that I'm wearing that I know a lot of you are gonna ask about. I got a lot of people asking about it at the show. I got this from an awesome website called toysnobs.com. I bought it before I went to the show and he was awesome enough to ship this to the hotel so that I could wear it during PowerCon. So I wanna give a massive shout out to the folks at toysnobs.com for the awesome customer service. And they've got some amazing shirts that you should definitely go check out. Thank you guys so much for watching this haul video. Stay tuned, because I've got lots of reviews of this stuff coming. Until next time, my friends.